And we're back here in Ypsilanti. Ryan Woolley alongside Chad Bush. Eastern Michigan opening up the Division I slate across the nation today. Spring Arbor again playing in their seventh game. The starters being introduced here to the home crowds. So let's go ahead and start with the Cougars of Spring Arbor. Again, they come in 6-0 on the season. They're going to send out there Drew Zydemo. He's a 6'3 senior guard out of Grand Rapids. He's played in every game and started every game so far this year. Tied for second on the team and rebounding with five. Joining him will be Tommy Hamilton, the 6'2 junior guard from Middleville, Michigan. Zach Maidendorf, keep that name in mind. You'll be hearing him a lot today. Second on the team in scoring, averaging 16 points a contest. Named third team all crossroads league just last season. Paul Marindet out of Warsaw, Indiana. He leads the team in scoring. He is at 18 points. And then rounding out the starting lineup here for the Cougars here today is Jeff Beckham, the 6'6 sophomore forward out of New Era, Michigan. He leads the team in rebounding with eight a game. As for Eastern Michigan, heard Chad talk about it. Three starters coming back and then nine new faces. Of course, Tim Bond, the 6'7 senior guard out of Baltimore, Maryland. He's the two-time All-Mac defensive team player. Nine points, four boards a game he averaged just last season. James Thompson joining him, the 6'10 junior center forward out of Baton Rouge. He is a walking double-double, averaged 15 points and 11 boards just last year. Running the point this year will be Paul Jackson, 6'2", redshirt junior guard out of Stone Mountain, Georgia, also named a captain heading into this one. He's a transfer from Eastern Kentucky. And rounding out the lineup will be Terry Harris and Elijah Minnie. And Chad, you just look at these three new faces joining the starting lineup. A lot to be decided coming into this. Who's playing where, what the rotation's gonna be. But when you got Jackson, Harris, and Minnie, a lot of talk about these guys joining Bond and Thompson and should be fun to watch. It should be. And Eastern Michigan returns just 29 points per game. That's 40% of their scoring from a year ago uh, Lee Mangum Tony Steele all gone uh, three of the top four scores so nine newcomers four returning letter winners but yeah watch those three guys who sat out last year all in the starting lineup Paul Jackson the point guard Elijah Minnie at forward and then uh, you're also going to see Terry Harris of the shooting guard so those three need to impact early a lot of pressure on those three who sat out last year we just saw a moment ago Ryan Cunningham in his 19th season as the head coach of Spring Arbor Rob Murphy entering his seventh year as head coach here at Eastern Michigan and Chad it was really no secret last season kind of a disappointing year for Eastern Michigan they didn't finish where they thought they should finish they were picked to win the Mid-American Conference West Division didn't happen second straight year they lost to Akron in the uh, quarterfinals of the MAC tournament so we'll say a lot of pressure on him this year but expectations are raised again though with who they have coming in they sure are Eagles picked last year to finish first in the MAC West this year finish to pick to finish fourth We'll see what expectations give to the Eagles here today. So the Eagles will win the tip. They will move right to left here in the first Division I basketball game of the 2017-2018 season. There you see Elijah Minnie drops it over to Bond in the left wing, tries to feed inside to Thompson, and that one quickly knocked away by Jeff Beckham. Yeah, this is a defense that is pesky. In fact, it was the best defense in 10 years for Spring Arbor last year as they were able to limit opponents to just 76 points per game. And we talked about it, too, there in the open, that they've already played six games. So here's Eastern Michigan playing their first game here at home as the head-on three is off the mark, and the rebound falls into the hands of Thompson. But again, Spring Arbor has played six games, Eastern Michigan getting their first action at 10.30 in the morning, no less. How does that affect their legs, and where does that kind of balance out? Well, it's a great point. I think it does affect their legs. Obviously, Spring Ar Arbor's had an opportunity to get their uh, legs under them and get themselves into a position where they're conditioned in game play, which is a different type of deal than uh, being conditioned uh, for practice in preseason. Thompson shot off the mark. Tommy Hamilton goes up for the rebound. Hamilton, third on the team in scoring, averages 10 points a game. Again, out of Middleville, Michigan. And the first points of the 2017-18 season go the way of Spring Arbor. They lead 2-0. Yeah, Maidendorp, that short corner right. That is a weak spot in the zone, and he found it and splashed it in. Spring Arbor on the board early, not scared so far. Two possessions already for the Eagles. Now they'll try an outside three. That one off the mark, and a rebound falls into the hands again of Jeff Beckman. And Eastern now 0 for 3 to start this game. A little pitch and catch here. This is the 2-3 zone, of course. Rob Murphy's patented 2-3 zone that he brought over from Syracuse. And these are, again, three newcomers in this zone. So we'll see, Ryan, how they adjust. Right now they found a soft spot down there on the uh, sideline near the baseline. And just like that is now 4-0 in favor of Spring Arbor. Yeah, Maidendorp's got that soft touch, 16 points per game. A guy that started all 32 last year. Well, now James Thompson quickly asserting his will down low. And 
We talked a little bit about JT and again these three guys joining him and Bond, but JT certainly did a lot of work not only last year, the walking double-double, but put in the work here in the offseason to better himself, and you can see it in his upper body. Sure can, Ryan. 30 pounds of muscle gain. He went from 215 at the end of the season in March. Credit Sean Connedy, strength conditioning coach, for working very intimately with James and getting him conditioned, getting him bulked up and ready to be a advanced power player as he prepares himself for a professional career perhaps in the future year. Now, some people may not even know, he actually declared himself for the NBA draft at the end of last season and then pulled out uh, before the draft took place, which you're able to do. But you get to see what NBA teams and scouts are looking for. And as you said, JT bulked up, he cut out the sodas, he cut out the fast food and really dedicated himself for a career after college. Yeah, the message was get stronger and, and control the emotional side of the game. And it looks like he's ready for that. Eagles still looking to tie this game up, trailing 4-2 early on. Now they feed to the Thompson, double team comes. Now triple team, and that one's stolen away from him. The Eagles struggling here offensively to start this game. Drew Zydema comes away with it. Zydema with the quick hands, the strip. You can tell Spring Arbor is uh, game condition ready and not afraid of the moment thus far. They've been pesky on defense. They feed down low, it's Marendorp. There's Hamilton trying to feed down and driving in. That one floats, hits the back of the rim and falls through. Just like that, it's now a 6-2 advantage to start this game for Spring Arbor. Yeah, and Maidendorp has six points in the ball game. He's a guy that uh, looks to have a nice soft touch down low. Again, trying to go inside. That one's knocked away. Elijah Minnie has it knocked out of his hands. Chad, what do you see being the keys to this game on both sides of the ball? Well, I think for Spring Arbor, they need to definitely hit some threes. They've got guys with NBA range, a guy in uh, Zydema that can hit it from deep, and then find the dead spots. That's the weakness of the zone for Spring Arbor, and uh, stay in the moment. Don't be afraid, and don't let the 4,000 kids in the house in the D1 environment get too big for you. Tim Bond's three off the mark. Marindette comes down with it. Eastern Michigan again continues to struggle here offensively. Dump shot, no good. Rebound into the hands of Eastern Michigan. Now trying to push the action. That was Elijah Minnie that went up for it. Bond will control it. Now Minnie here at the top of the key trying to drive in. Splits between two defenders. Had a nice screen set up by JT underneath. And we'll have a whistle. Elijah Minnie is a guy that Eastern Michigan fans are going to fall in love with. He has athleticism like uh, a guy by the name of Carrington Ward who's playing uh, for the Windy City Lightning Bolts in Chicago in the Gatorade League, the G League as they call it now. Right. <laughs> this is a Robert Morris transfer and a kid that has off the charts athleticism as he nets the first. And, and this is a guy that is multidimensional and, and the best shooter on the team, a guy that's going to be able to stretch the floor. He's a stretch floor and open some things up for Thompson down low for Easter. I was going to say it really creates a mismatch because it's like, who do you want to guard? Do you want to guard the 6'10 junior out of James Thompson or do you want the 6'9 redshirt junior out of Elijah Minnick? Yeah, he's a matchup nightmare. Pick your poison. You mentioned the transfer from Robert Morris. Average two blocks a game and 14 double-digit scoring games for Morris as well. Here's Tim Bond. Gets it up to Jackson. Jackson takes it all the way up, rolls it off the back of the window, doesn't go. Rebound into the hands of Bond, but we'll have a whistle underneath the bucket. There you see Tim Bond starting the break. You talk to the Eastern Michigan coaching staff, they said Tim Bond is a rarity. He's a three-man that can start the break in transition, and a guy that uh, for Eastern Michigan they love, the seasoned veteran and the only senior on the ball club. My bad if I went too far. Back here at the Convocation Center in Ypsilanti, it's Eastern Michigan and Spring Arbor. It's the first all-time meeting between these two schools, also the first ever game for Eastern Michigan here in the 2017-18 season. Again, the seventh game for the Cougars, but you know, Chad, you look at this, not only is this the first game of the season for Eastern Michigan, but they're opening at home now for the fifth time in the last six years. They are a perfect 5-0 and in their last five home openers. The low loss over that stretch was the game you were at just last year at Pitt. That's right, they opened at Pitt and did some great things in the Steel City. And an overtime loss, that was a great start. But yeah, that was the only time in the Rob Murphy era that they have not started uh, a ball game at home. Murphy also a perfect 19-0 in both exhibition and regular season games against non-D1 teams. Hoping to keep that alive here. Bond flips it up, and it's slammed home by Elijah Minnie. 
Just like that, Eastern Michigan grabs their first lead of the game with authority. Second steal for Bond, a guy that's had 136 steals over the last two years. And there you see the athleticism in the 42-inch vertical from Elijah Minnie, the kid out of Pittsburgh. But Marindette comes right back down the floor, grabs the lead right back for Spring Arbor. 9-8, a head-on three. And the Cougars now back on top. Yeah, Marindette's one of the uh, four players on the Spring Arbor roster that can really stick it. Kid putting up 17 and a half points per game to their second leading score. Well, how about this? Elijah Minnie comes right back, head on three himself, says anything you can do, I can do better. Five straight points for him. Eastern now up by two. Elijah Minnie all but two points of the 11 for Eastern Michigan. There you see it. He can stretch it and he can stuff it. We saw both in his last two buckets. Let's go back and take a, that, a look at that last play. There's Thompson. He feeds back out. And Minnie just a head on three, able to drain it. Again, Eastern now leading by two, 11 to nine, here under 15 minutes to play in the first half. And that's what we talked about, Ryan, the double team, and now the steal for Minnie. How about this? But Coming that, out party. And that was the double team part of me, Ryan, to Thompson that kicked out to Minnie that opened it up. And you're gonna see a lot of that this year. Teams no longer can cheat on Thompson. They're gonna have to be honest and respect the outside touch of Minnie. And also will give Eastern Michigan an opportunity if one or both of them get into foul trouble. Way to go. and. Keep that offense moving. Okay, 10 seconds here on the shot clock. Marinette looking for somewhere to go. Feeds it over to the corner. That one nearly poked away. Now five seconds on the clock. It's at the top of the block E. They got to put a shot up and gonna be bailed out by a whistle. With one second on the shot clock, and that is going to make Rob Murphy stop those Johnston and Murphys over there. <laughs> that is not going to make him happy. But that's what Marinette does. This kid is fabulous. Not only is he second in the country in total steals in NAIA, but he gets the free throw line nine times a game. He just has a knack for drawing contact. He's a very quick, explosive player uh, for the Spring Arbor Cougars. He's an 80% free throw shooter as well. He was named Cornerstone Player of the Week just a couple of games ago. 18 points, four boards, eight assists after their first three games to start this season. Yeah, he's a super sophomore for them. There's 20 on the clock now here for the Cougars. Hamilton with it. Drives in, kicks it underneath. That one off the leg. And now fighting for underneath was Thompson. They're going to say it looks like Minnie might have been out of bounds. So it will stay with Spring Arbor with 12 on the shot clock. You can tell that 2-3 zone starting to heat up a bit. And this is a unit that's got to get cohesive as Nobles checks in. He's going to be their sixth man this year along with Ellison. This is just guys not used to playing in the zone as, as we see nine new faces this year. Eight seconds now here on the shot clock. Marindette left wing trying to drive in, nowhere to go. It's Ellison who's checked into the game for the Eagles. Thompson nearly blocked that one, but gets over his 6'10 frame, and it's now 13 to 11. Yeah, Marindette scratches the surface there. You see his versatility. Loves that pull-up mid-range game from the point guard spot. Not a three-point shooter. So really, it's the Elijah Mini Paul Marindette show so far to start this one. Thompson went up twice, didn't have it. Now falling away. I don't know if he got poked in the eye or not, but it doesn't look like it. But he does draw a foul, so he will head to the free throw line. Well, the offensive rebounds, James Thompson, second in the country last year in offensive rebounds, continues to thrive this year. And with that body weight and not losing any vertical, not losing any agility, he's going to be scary good on the glass, especially on the offensive side of it. We talked about it, a walking double-double, averaged 15 points, 11 rebounds last year, Chad. 20 double-doubles in the season, third most in the MAC, and three shy of the record here at EMU. Yeah, he's chasing a guy by the name of Brandon Bowdry, who was a good one here at Eastern Michigan. Thompson, though, misses both free throws, and that was something he struggled with last year at times. And uh, James, a competitive guy, smacks his hands and not uh, too excited about that dual opportunity miss. Still a two-point advantage here for EMU. Luke Butler went up for three, had it blocked. Here's Elijah Minnie putting on a show and a one-handed jam on the other side. Elijah Minnie continues the run. He has 13 points of the 15 to start this game. <laughs> and another steal by Bond is third of the game. As Eastern getting on a run here, it's their defense that creates the offense. He's from the left corner. Checked in was Jordan Nobles. He'll bury a three, 18 to 11. And that's going to prop the timeout across the way. Ryan Cunningham going to try to slow this game down, talk to his players with 12.55 to go here in the first half. So a seven-point advantage. Let's go back and take a look at this, Chad. Here's the block, and then watch Benny finish on the other end. 
He's a guy that can get up and leap it, and this is a guy that Eastern Michigan has not seen since the Carrington Ward days. He's long, he's lean, he's explosive, and what an addition from Robert Morris. Sat out last year. All three of these guys are critical, and Paul Jackson, the point guard, who transferred in from uh, Eastern Kentucky. Terry Harris, who transferred in uh, uh, from Houston Baptist. But this guy, Elijah Minnie, is somebody that a lot of folks in the preseason polls, and you expect this, wasn't selected on a first-team All-Mac. I get that. But at the end of the season, Elijah Minnie is going to be a guy that folks in the Mid-American Conference in the country are going to be thinking about for a while. So following the timeout, the Cougars will inbound. Stepping out to throw it in is Tommy Hamilton and this pressure defense again by the Eagles. They've forced a couple of turnovers, which have led to some easy points here after falling down early. We'll see how Spring Arbor handles the full court pressure. Eastern's going to do more of this this year due to their athleticism and depth. Marinette on the left wing trying to feed it inside. Nowhere to go. Good defense there by Mark Ellison. Malik Ellison, excuse me. Feeds it over to the right side. Three seconds on the shot clock. Hamilton trying to drive in. Nowhere to go. And that one going to be picked off near the rim by James Thompson. You can see the length distracting the Cougars. The team that started off with a 6-2 lead. Bond tried to feed in to Thompson, who was trying to back down his man. So we'll get a foul here on Spring Arbor. So 17 on the clock, and now checking in for Eastern Michigan, a couple of substitutions. 16 to 5 run, Ryan, over the last four minutes for Eastern Michigan, and that's something that uh, this team's going to do a lot of this year, score and spurts. Checking in was Ty Gross. He's the 6'7 redshirt sophomore forward out of Ipsy. But again, a seven-point advantage, Chad, and Again, the game started the way of the Cougars, and as you just alluded to, as that ball is kicked out of bounds by many. Once they got their defense humming, Eastern Michigan able to roll and grab this lead. So 11.55 to go here, first half. Eagles by seven, first D1 game of the year here on ESPN3. Great call on that steal and alley. Back here at the Convocation Center in Ypsilanti, Ryan Woolley alongside Chad Bush. Eastern Michigan on top of Spring Arbor by seven, 18 to 11. And Chad, we talked about Eastern Michigan last year, but how about the Cougars? They had one of their most successful seasons in recent years. They went 18 and 14, 9 and 9 in Crossroads League play, where they finished in fifth. That was their highest position, though, since their 2012 13 campaign, and really hoping to build on that this season. Yeah, best season in 10 years, 71 points per game defensively, 15th best in the country. That was really what got them going, and they're in good hands. Look, Ryan Cottingham's been here 19 years now, and he knows what he's doing. This is also the athletic director, and uh, I'll tell you what, they have uh, momentum in the program, and they're on their way to a uh, fine season, as you could tell, 6-0 and already this year, and they knocked off the number one team in the country in Cornerstone out of the state of Michigan, number one in NAI. They finished second last year, national runners up. So uh, already potent statements by Spring Arbor and the Cougars this year. When we talked about Eastern Michigan, you know, having the three new faces and the, the two big returning starters and Tim Bond and of course James Thompson. Yes, Jordan Nobles is back as well and Jalen Brown, but you talk about the three returning starters for Spring Arbor, and we've seen it really pay dividends so far in this game. Talking about Zach Maidendorf and then Paul Marindad, who's been uh, leading the charge with all 11 points here for the Cougars. Yeah, a couple of all-leaguers, and by the way, it's the all-crossroads league. They've been there since 2004. They were formerly in the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference. So 20-11, Eastern Michigan leads up until that last three right there. Ben Jeschke. Hits it from the outside. That makes it 20 to 14 and ends a long field goal drought. Now looking around, nowhere to go. Pulls up for a three is a, a Ty Gross. That went off the mark. We'll have another whistle near center court. Yeah, Jeske, a guy that found the spot in the zone. And Elijah Mini a bit out of position on that wing. Late covering up. That was the dead spot. And uh, Spring Arbor took advantage and hit their first three since the opening minutes uh, of this ball game. But that's what they do. They hit about eight a game. And that's a guy you have to watch along with uh, Zydema. He's the first one to score outside of Marindette and Maidendorf so far today as well. 
Under 11 minutes to play here, first half. Eastern Michigan on top by six, 20 to 14. Again, another three. That one just to the left where he made his last. Loose ball underneath. Rebound falls into the hands of the Cougars. Slow reset. Yeah, fine play that time by, by one of the bench members. Jeff Beckman. Second shot was no good. Rebound falls into the hands of Isaiah Green. Seeing some action here for Eastern Michigan. Number 32, he's a 6'7 junior forward out of Southfield. There's many top of the key again. That head on three. It's the back side of the rim. Bounces back out. But another good look for many. He's not shy, is he? <laughs> no, he's not. And we get a look at Ellison, the freshman, playing the top side of that zone. Offset by Nobles down there. That one picked off at the top. Isaiah Green. Grabs the board, so good defense again here by the Eagles. Now they're trying to push the action. They're going to send it over to Gross, right corner three, and he'll bury it. Eastern Michigan increases the lead, now 23 to 14, under 10 to play in the first half. Eastern Michigan was one of the worst three-point shooting teams in the conference last year. Rob Murphy in the offseason said, we need to get guys that can shoot the ball from deep, and that's what they did. They went out and they got a guy like Ty Gross, they got a guy like Terry Harris, who was already in the program. They like Kevin McAdoo, the freshman, who we'll see, and Elijah Minnie. So the addition of the long gunners for Eastern, the key. And it's really weird to think about that when you say that and put it into perspective. Ranking dead last in, in three-point percentage when you think about guys like Ray Lee and Willie Mangum, who were on the team last year and would get hot at certain times, but they just weren't as consistent as you expected them to be. High volume long gunners, and that's something that uh, you're right. You sort of got lost in because they make a lot, right. but they take a lot. <laughs> and, and, and they did both wonders for the program, nothing to Absolutely. take away. However, you're adding guys like Minnie and Gross uh, and, and Harris that can really knock it down. You're going to like this kid, Kevin McAdoo, as well, uh, who we have not seen yet out of West Bloomfield. But all those guys can shoot it. And Ty Gross at 6'7", can shoot along the mini at 6'9". You have that length to get over uh, the top side. The thing that I think has jumped off the screen here just early on in this game is the athleticism that Eastern Michigan has. As Malik Ellison has it now eight seconds on the clock. And you just see it out there with guys like Minnie and Thompson and Bond. Now driving all the way in is Gross. Takes a nice pass at the end and slams it home. Well, there you see it. Uh, Gross and Minnie are a similar type player in that they can both shoot the three. Both can get up. Both guys 42-inch verticals. And did you see how quick <laughs> and explosive the local boy Gross is? Again. Ty Gross out of Ipsy, three-time letter winner at Lincoln High School just down the road. He was named to the Washington County Dream Team as a senior. And Bond knocks that one away, and he'll push the action here. Three on three for EMU. Bond trying to take it the whole way. Doesn't go. Loose underneath, and the rebound corralled by Brandon Durnell. Well, that's Bond's game, finishing at the rim, starting the break. Thought he had a couple guys there on each wing that he could have passed it to. 8-11 to play in this one. Eastern Michigan is a team. 8 of 18 from the floor, shooting 44%. A pull-up three off the mark. Thought he was fouled was Ellison. Now Zynema on the ball comes and nearly takes out our sideline reporter, Michael Kirby. Now Kirby's got great hands. <laughs> Scouting report says watch out for Kirby. Great hands, soft touch. We'll hear from him. Won't we, sure? we will. Bright future in this business as well. Happy to have him back. So 8.01 to play here, first half. 25-14, Eastern Michigan leads. Eagles 3 of 7 from downtown in this game for 43%. Spring Arbor from the floor, 6 of 16 for 38%, and 2 of 7 from beyond the arc. Wow, those have uh, switched spots. Kevin McAdoo has checked into this game. You brought him up, uh, Chad, the 6'2 freshman guard out of West Bloomfield, and he certainly has quite a few accolades that he brings to the team as well. A four-time letter winner at West Bloomfield and a four-time all-league selection. But right now, the Eagles lead 25 to 14. Another media timeout, 7.42 to play here in Ypsilanti.
Back here at the Convocation Center, it is Education Day. A lot of local elementary schools taking in this game. 4,100 students actually in attendance for this one. They get to see a doubleheader. The Eastern Michigan men, of course, in action right now. The women will be playing just about an hour and a half from now, but quite the run the Eagles are on right now, Chad. Yeah, the last seven minutes, 14 seconds, a 23-12 run for Eastern Michigan over the last seven minutes. So this is the run that we expected to see from them at some point. Now. Spring Arbor not out of this thing. When you can shoot the three like they can, they're never out of it. There's Gross, a turnaround shot off the mark. So far, Elijah Manny leading the way for Eastern Michigan. He's the only player in double figures. He is 15 points to start this game. Four of six from the floor, one of two from downtown, and a perfect six of six mm. from the charity strike. Kick back out. Then Geschke had already made a three. Now kicks it over to the right side, the side of him. Yeah, if you're Spring Arbor, you need to be patient here. You don't have to get a quick shot. Get the right shot. There they get it. Extra pass left a wide open man, but that one off the mark is Geschke's shot. Goes off, and the Eagles now will take back over. As Tim Bond will take it and bring it back down the floor after getting fouled. And this is going to be an interesting matchup for Thompson. He is in there against size, and Division I size it is. Kyle Bartholomew, kid out of Holland, Michigan, is 6'11", and he's all a 6'11". And a guy that uh, played 29 games last year. So he's experienced. He's a big. And Thompson at 6'10 against 6'11. Bartholomew is going to be a nice little gauge for both players. Yep. But for Thompson to face uh, somebody of that size uh, is going to help him out. Well, Bond at the free throw line will make his first. And we talked about him in the open a little bit. Named a captain again this year. All Mac, a defensive team. A second straight year. And you look at what he did last year, Chad. 69 steals. Third most in EMU history, and just how that wingspan of his. And if you want to, you know, pun intended, talk about an eagle stretch. I mean, he has it. <laughs> he does, and he had 68 steals the year before. So very consistent, and uh, all defensive team member back-to-back -back years. Nothing tells me that this year won't be the same. Uh, but they need him a little more this year to lead. Yep. And he's developed into that role nicely and increased his leadership. Right there, just a little late getting over, but a three by Drew Zydema in the corner makes it 26 to 17 in favor of EMU. Yeah, Zydema's got that soft touch, left hand 6 3 from that corner spot. Eastern a little tardy getting out to the corner. Got to cover that up quicker, but nice uh, poke in by the southpaw. Right now, Spring Arbor. Three of nine from downtown as James Thompson gets involved, slams that one home. Thompson, you can tell the explosiveness. You can tell in the biceps. He's just stronger, more confident. Just goes off his hand, able to corral it underneath. You know, when you look at Thompson, I'm going to see if the same player comes to your mind in the NBA. Anybody you want me stand to guess out first? Yeah, anybody? I'll give, I'll, I'll give you a hint. He's bounced around teams, but he really got his big break in Orlando. And I'm not talking Shaq. <laughs> um, you got me, Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard. Okay. I just yeah, just looking at him. Just just the frame, just the way he, he carries himself. Yeah, I see it. I see it. That would have been the first thing that popped my mind. But now that you say that, uh, yes, yes. And, and there's another guy that does come to mind. Uh, in the defensive mindedness, and we'll get to this in a moment. As Thompson went in for a block, contested three different shots, and Eastern Michigan's defense holds serve again as McAdoo brings it down. Now McAdoo trying to push the action, gets around his defender. That one swatted away. Now we're going to have a foul underneath. I thought one ref already blew the whistle. The next one came in and did it with authority. Yeah, they're going to wave off the uh, shot, but. Foul McAdoo's going to get free throws here. Not sure if they're calling that free shot or not, but it's irrelevant as uh, Eastern Michigan is in the bonus. So Hamilton will pick it up. But go going back to who you were saying, uh, I know this sports. sounds crazy, but I, at the next level, I see him more like a Nene type player. Okay. Okay, a guy that is going to be a defensive first guy at the next level, and if he's fortunate enough to get to the next right. level. A lot of steps to get there. James certainly has the makeup to do it, but we're talking elite elite. And, and kind of like a Steven Adams type guy as well, um, they're gonna they're gonna pay you in the NBA to play defense and get rebounds. Right. And if James Thompson's going to be at the next level, they aren't gonna go to him as an offensive option. He'll make his money on defense. And, and so, yeah, at Eastern Michigan, he can get some points, but, but in, in the NBA at the next level, He's a guy that's going to be strictly defense in rebounding. 
and it's a gift, and he has that gift with rebounding. Uh, a nose for the basketball, and of course, added the ball, it helps out with his draft ability. Let's see what happens here. Eight seconds now on the shot clock. Thompson was boxing on his defender as that one's poked away. Goes out of bounds. Terry Harris getting his hand on, redirecting it. So five on the clock, 4.50 to play here first half, 32-17 Eastern Michigan as they open up the 2017-18 season. This is a good chance for Spring Arbor to work on their uh, ball out of bounds play with a low shot clock, just four seconds to work. Aaron Dett will put it up, and Thompson will sky for the rebound. So JT will grab his seventh board of the day. Now they'll feed into Elijah Many, who kicks it back out. That's Terry Harris open for three on the left side, and he'll bury it. Eastern Michigan continues their hot shooting from downtown. Now 9 of 13 are the Eagles. He's a spot-up shooter. It looks a little funky coming off the hand. It's got a little side action twist, but uh, Harris of Eastern Michigan is going to do the kind of things they want to do this year. They're going to need Harris to knock down triples like we see right there from uh, Pavelka. Yeah, Jamison Pavelka comes right back and answers. 35 to 20 now. Feet of the Thompson and kicks it back out. Here's Harris again. Same spot he made that last three from, and that one just rims out. That's the shot you wanted. Double team, took advantage of it, got the open look, couldn't hit it. Marinette now trying to drive in, gets a nice screen set up. Harris was blocked. And Thompson again skies for the board. Now give him eight. Paul Jackson, a lot of hype for PJ coming into this, how he was going to fit in at the point guard role. And out of Stone Mountain, Georgia, also named a captain, and he's another one of those players you talked about with that 42-inch vertical. He's something, a great athlete, great student, top GPA on the ball club. Uh, he hasn't found his way in this game, and, 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 you know, I don't know if it's nerves or sitting out or rotating in quite a bit, but he's not a guy that has emerged yet in this contest, but I can tell you this, he will be a pass-first point guard and set players up. Maidendorf with that last bucket. He's the closest for Spring Arbor in a double figures. He has eight points to go along with five rebounds so far in this game, four of seven from the floor. Sky for the rebound. So we'll make it six now for him. And just under three minutes to play, Eastern Michigan on top by 13, 35-22. Like I'm sorry, Ryan, I like this Maidendorf kid. Senior leading this team right now on the road to Division One, single-handedly keeping them in this game. He's got great length at 6'8", and, and a guy that has experience and has been an all-leaguer. So 13-point advantage for the Eagles, 35-22. We'll take a quick timeout. We'll be back with our final 250 in the first half. Like, like Craig said, I mean, the biggest thing is don't. Like here at the Convocation Center, it is the Division One season opener across the country and also for Eastern Michigan. Of course, the Eagles opening up their campaign and trying to get back to what they were trying to do last year. They were picked to win the Mid American Conference West Division and fell in the quarterfinal round to Akron, hoping for a better result this year. We've talked about the new faces in new places. There you see Kevin McAdoo, who was on the floor, and McAdoo, certainly a highly touted freshman coming in. The Eagles following today's game will remain at home. Michigan Dearborn will be coming out. He's driving in is PJ in between two defenders, somehow contorts his body, Chad, and able to get it up and in. He's a finisher. He's stronger than he looks. Paul Jackson out of Atlanta, Georgia, is a guy that uh, Eastern Michigan, they could do so much with. The true point guard, and the first Eastern's really had since Mike Talley. But this guy's strong, good in the paint, quick, and uh, just one of those guys that you want leading your program, the junior out of Atlanta. So he got the and one, so Eastern Michigan now on top by 16, 38 to 22. Paul Jackson transferred from Eastern Kentucky. He played 20 of 30 games out there, averaged seven points and five boards of contest. A turnover here by the Cougars. That will be their ninth of the day. Mr. Michigan, meanwhile, has only turned the ball over twice in this contest. Eagles is a team shooting 12 of 27 from the floor for 44%. Spring Arbor 9 of 25 for 36. Driving in was P.J. That one knocked away. J.T. had it knocked out of his hands as well. And now the Cougars going to push the action as Paul Marinette brings it down. This is a critical point for Spring Arbor. Down in this game by 16. Their goal right now is to keep it at 10 or below at halftime. They're going to need to hit some threes if they're going to do that. Here's one on the right side. That one just too strong. Rebound into the hands of the Eagles, and that's Paul Jackson. I like the 
patience by Jackson to pull it out, reset. Trying to drive in, and that one knocked away. Hamilton feeds it up court. As Pavelka now will fire, or fire over to Marinette on the right side. Now again, they went to the corner, and shot wasn't there, but Hamilton going to spot for a three from the wing, and now Jordan Noble will grab the rebound. Great closeout by McAdoo, the freshman, whose defense is a little bit behind the offense right now. But a great closeout. Fine ball movement as well by the Cougars on that offensive set. They got the right shot. Pitch and catch here between Nobles and Paul Jackson. Now Elijah Minney over the top to James Thompson. Thompson says, just, just a little bit higher. I, I got the height advantage. <laughs> That's right. No need to force it there. Eastern forcing the last two sets with Jackson on the drive and the lob down to uh, Thompson that got picked. There's Marinette at the top of the key. Double team slowly made its way over to him and I'll pass out of it. Now Marinette again. It's his man in air. That was McAdoo. Baseline jumper no good. Jordan Nobles again with the rebound. This offense gone cold here over the last couple of possessions. Under a minute to play. 46 seconds and counting. Nobles back to Jackson. Over to McAdoo right wing. Coming up on 10 on the clock. Stutter set by Jackson. McAdoo right wing. Seven seconds, trying to drive in, spins underneath the lay-in. Unbelievable. How did he get that? He's crafty, he's quick, and he can score in so many ways. Kevin McAdoo out of West Bloomfield High School. His daddy played at University of Detroit, and uh, he's going to be a fine player. Shot clock is off, so the Cougars can hold for the final shot here in the first half. Good ball movement all the way to the corner again. Wide open three, and they bury it. Jamison Pavelka hits it. 40 to 25. Did a nice job. Set his feet. Shot that with confidence. Fine follow through. As the clock winds down. Paul Jackson put up a three. Doesn't go. And that will end first half action here at the Convocation Center in Ypsilanti. The Eagles leading by 15 over the Cougars of Spring Arbor. We'll come back and talk about it after this on ESPN3.
Right now, the Eagles lead 40 to 25 here at the half. And Eastern has some family values, and it certainly shows across the women's basketball team. Here's a quick preview. Family is the first thing that we want to establish, a family environment amongst our players, amongst our staff, and amongst our program as a whole. Uh, I truly believe to maximize the potential of all our players, our staff members, and the program as a whole, there needs to be a family environment where people can feel comfortable, uh, accountable, and where they can be challenged to be the best version of themselves. I first met Fred on my official visit 12 years ago at the University of Oklahoma, and uh, at that time he did a little bit of everything. I met Fred my freshman year of college, I think, uh, at Oklahoma. Fred was a senior or a fifth year senior. Um, and it was at uh, bat women's basketball practice. Fred worked for the team, and I was a uh, scout team, a male scout team. My, my high school coach was an assistant at Oklahoma. So uh, that's, that's where I met Fred and, and kind of started to build a friendship from there. Adam. He was that annoying scout guy that, like, I hate to admit to him, made us better. I'll never tell him that to his face, but he was that person that, like, if our coach was like, if the team scores one more time, like, we're going to run. And Adam would make sure, like, he did everything in his power to make sure that uh, we ran multiple times. But you got to appreciate someone who, like, takes pride in scout and takes pride in getting us better. First met Fred when I was a junior at um, Albany. That's when we had our first coaching change. Um, the head coach at the time was Katie Abrahamson Henderson and she brought Fred along and then from there we just had a great, I think a great relationship. You know we're really fortunate from the standpoint that we've, we've known each other for 10 plus years. I, I went to college with uh, Adam. I was with Abby at Oklahoma so I've known her since she was 16 and uh, I coached uh, Cassandra at Albany. Uh, so we got, I got to go through the of her going through a uh, five win season to the first winning season at Albany. So uh, all those kind of experiences kind of flew you together, if you will. So these are, these are people that, you know, one way or another, whether they worked with me or not, uh, I was going to know them for, for a life. So it's nice to have them around. Um, they know me. Uh, I know them very well. And I think that really uh, makes us work a, a little bit more efficiently uh, and to be frank I think a little bit harder for each other because we want to help each other out as much as possible. Yeah there's certain things you can't fake uh, you know that relationships and being genuine is one of those you either have it or you don't and uh, you know I, I like to think that we do you know uh, I think you can tell in our recruiting it uh, we've been pretty uh, productive uh, in our recruiting processes and I think that's something that not only players see but parents see and, and they want to see a family and environment uh, that's real. I think that it's it's evident when recruits come on campus they can tell if you if you know each other if it's genuine uh, if it's not and it's not like we don't fake anything so you know we might we might have disagreements and they see that but it, it's also good to just see that we're real and, and that we actually know each other and I think the more you're around us you understand that we, we care about each other as well so I think with recruiting especially and, and with our our team our current team that that that, that that's huge it, it, and not everywhere has that. Go Sam on three. One, three. Yeah. Back here at the Convocation Center in Ypsilanti, Michigan, Ryan Woolley alongside Chad Bush. Eastern Michigan leading Spring Arbor by 15, 40 to 25. And Chad, we've had a half to kind of digest what we saw there in the first half. What really stood out to you the most? 
Well, the fact that Spring Arbor came in and was unfazed by this environment of 4,000 kids in the house and, and, and folks, and then the fact that uh, they did give up the lead, but Eastern Michigan did show some vulnerability at times, but they uh, had their athleticism shine through, get transition buckets, and also the, the three-point shooting for Eastern Michigan by the newcomers. Quite impressive. All the newcomers with the, uh, well, most of the three-pointers came by way of the newcomers as they were able to get uh, triples from a variety of sources. So we're seeing a different sort of Eastern Michigan three-point shooting team, but the same old type of defensive team that forces chaos and turnovers as they average nearly 10 steals a game last year. And some of those threes you're talking about, uh, Gross had one, McAdoo with another. Nobles, of course, is not a newcomer, but also twirled the twine. And then Elijah Minnie, who leads all scores with 15 points. He was one of three from downtown and scored 13 of those 15 points in the first four and a half minutes. Knock away as Hamilton tried to drive in, kicks it out right corner. Two seconds on the shot clock, and he's doubled. That's put up a shot, doesn't go. Falls into the hands of James Thompson. So it would have been a shot clock violation, but the Eagles will take over anyway. Tim Bott is so good, he can guess and gamble and still get back and cover up the corner three. And that's what he did there to uh, force the buzzer beater that uh, was off the mark. There's Bond right wing, feeds it into Thompson, who slams it home. Second alley-oop dunk we have seen tonight. Timmy Bond from the right wing, James Thompson underneath, and the Eagles now up 42-25. There you see it. These two have played together now for a couple of years. You see the synergy on the oop. And Bond, a guy not necessarily known uh, to lead the oop uh, from the half-court set. We've seen it quite a bit. But uh, Timmy from way uh, in the three-point line beyond with a nice oop to James. The flush. Just went right over Jameson Pavelka. Underneath actually now is Maidendorp and his shot off the mark. You know, we talked about what we saw in the first half from Eastern Michigan, but you talk a lot about Zach Maidendorp here in the first half. He certainly has stood out as well here for Spring Arbor. Yeah, Maidendorp has, and he's, he's been choosy with the shots. Eight points, he took eight shots, but uh, rebounding-wise also leading them with seven. And in 16 minutes played, I mean, he's a guy that they need uh, to do things at both ends of the floor. Harris from the left side, he'll light it up again. Terry Harris for his second three of the game. Give him six on the day. Harris, a kid from Long Island in New York. Tobias Harris, his brother, the Detroit Pistons leading scorer. Detroit Pistons, how about them? How about second them? Second huh? best record in the NBA. Eight and three. Man, oh, man. I think people started to take note when they won those back-to-back -back West Coast games against uh, the Clippers and then, of course, the defending uh, champions and the Golden State Warriors. Have a foul underneath the bucket, Maidendorp. Great job by Maidendorp to follow the off miss on the three, and with strength got the and one down low. He's long, he's wiry, and just seems to find those crevices, Ryan, that uh, allows him to get in there. But you, I mean, he's got six nine mini down there, six ten Thompson, <laughs> and the long Tim Bond, and he finds a way to get in there and uh, get the and one opportunity. Of course, missed uh, the opportunity for the harm. Looks kind of uncharacteristic for him. Again, we talked about, gets to the line eight, nine times again, shoots 90% uh, from the free throw line, but that one off the mark. But nonetheless, it's 45-27 Eastern Michigan. And now here's many Step back from the free throw line, off the mark, rebound into the hands of Zydema. Now trying to push the action. Here's Marindep, goes down the right side, now kicks it back out. Yeah, you can get a better shot than that if you're many in your Eastern Michigan. That's not the shot that Rob Murphy wanted, not the best shot available. Trying to drive in, nowhere to go is Hamilton. Picked up his dribble, passes out of it. He's working against Harris. Now double team comes. Eight seconds here on the shot clock. Now they feed in. That's Maidendorf. Gets around James Thompson. It's swatted away underneath the bucket by Elijah Minnie. How about that? Oh, goodness. <laughs> Just electric athletes. It's almost unfair to have a 6'10 James Thompson and a 6'9 Elijah Minnie on the floor at the same time. It is. Eastern has not had anything like this in uh, the Rob Murphy era. Two guys that could do something like that as we see here on this uh, rebound. The rejection as Maidendorf thought he was home free. Right? Minnie kind of came out of nowhere. It looked like he was down near the sideline in the right corner and Used that big body frame to come over. Mm. Scored on the other end as well. So now a 20 point advantage for Eastern Michigan. Maidendorf driving in and contested by James Thompson. So JT will pick up the foul. 
And that's something, Ryan, that is a concern for Eastern Michigan this year. There's two things with Tops. There's so many positives, and this kid is obviously uh, excellent, not only in the classroom but on the court. But he's a guy that you worry about two things. You worry about foul trouble with him back in the center position, mm -hmm. and, and you worry about what happens when folks are going to get physical with him. Not because he's going to shy away. <laughs> it's just because uh, you don't want him so emotionally engaged that he gets off his game. But right there you saw the foul on Thompson. Rob Murphy's challenged him to be more of a shot blocker as well. And that was just his first in this game. Eastern Michigan as a team only has three uh, personal fouls in the first half, three here in the second for six overall. That will not count as Elijah Minnie picked it up off the glass. There was a whistle before he was able to slam it home. Eastern trying to drive in. Paul, Tommy Hamilton for the foul. Paul Jackson, guy that can drive it. Is strong and confident in the paint despite the uh, lack of stature at uh, six foot two. They got him listed at six foot two, huh? Yeah, that's what they had in the program. Okay. But it surprised me when you said he had a 42 inch vertical. I mean, of, of anybody on this team, because we were going over who had these verticals, and, and I said, it's got to be Timmy Bond. I mean, he's, he's got to be in that class. And you told me it was PJ. I kind of looked at you sideways like, really? <laughs> he's one of three. Along with Minnie and Ty Gross, 42 inch verticals. There were three folks at the NBA Combines, okay, this past spring that had a 42 inch vertical. Three out of the top players expected to go in the NBA draft. Eastern has three of them on the roster. And they're not just jumpers, I mean, these are complete players. Arendorf drove in. Nice defense there by the Eagles. James Thompson setting his feet. Now they're quickly trying to push it the other way. It's Terry Harris down in the corner, gets it over to Jackson. Now they feed into JT. Double team comes. Jackson, extra pass. Harris from the corner, buries it. Doesn't draw a foul despite going to the floor. Jeff Beckman hits him. Well, they are, they are going to give it to him, so they're going to count the bucket and the foul. I didn't hear the whistle. No, it was a soft whistle by the 4,000 screaming kids that overshadowed it. But how about the extra pass by Jackson and the pass out of the double team by Thompson and the finish by Harris? That's what Rob Murphy drew up when he saw the folks that were coming in this year. That's the kind of envision he had with the passing of Jackson, the shooting of Harris, and the double team on Thompson. There was a great article in the Detroit News about Eastern Michigan season preview this year, and, and Rob Murphy was quoted in there, and he was talking about Paul Jackson. Just he is a, a true point guard. He knows how to dish it out. It's not about getting his points, not about getting his shots off. It's about finding a way to dish the ball around, and, and you see it right there was prime example. Jeff Beckman with a nice elbow jumper, and that's the soft spot of the zone. You want to get it to the high post. Beckman found it. That's going to give Rob Murphy nightmares because that's what he protects against. And that's the guard's responsibility most times to cover that high post. That time it was wide open and Beckman made a pay for it. I made it 52 to 31. Eastern Michigan turns it over on the other side. Paul Jackson drove in but had it knocked away. Eagles as a team with just five turnovers in this game. How about the bench scoring for Eastern Michigan in this game? <laughs> 52 to 9. I mean, that's quite the advantage. That's that's pretty impressive. You get that, you're going to win most, if not every game. Second chance opportunity here now for the Cougars. And again, give the Cougars credit. I mean, they came into this game 6 and 0. We talked about the legs and who really had the advantage in this one. And Spring Harbor came to play early, and they're not going away. No, they're not. And you talk about second chance points. If I told you that uh, it was even between Spring Harbor and Eastern Michigan and second chance points in this game, you tell me I'm crazy, which I am. <laughs> but that's what that. it is. They are even at four apiece on second chance opportunities. Well, the whistle underneath the bucket. James Thompson gets tangled up. He's working with Jeff Beckman down there. So we'll have immediate timeout on the floor. Eastern Michigan leading 52-33. 14-35 to play here in the first game of the 2017-18 season. Fifty two thirty three Eastern Michigan leads the Cougars of Spring Arbor. Let's bring in the third member of our broadcast team Michael Kirby who is standing by Mike what you got. Yes, yeah, so I was sitting down there by the bench and coach Murphy just really emphasized get the ball down low. You know we've got the size we've got the big guys down there get the ball down low and when the double team comes 
that's when you can start shooting it outside. But it'll be interesting to see what they do the rest of the second half. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, Mike. Yeah, points of the paint right now in favor of Eastern Michigan. They have 20 to Spring Arbor's eight. And again, going talking about these big guys and James Thompson, Elijah Minnie. Many now with 17 points. JT, four points away from his first double-double of the year. He has six points and 11 rebounds. And that's a great point by Mike. Hey, look, why not try to pull pressure down low and try to get your power players of Thompson and also Elijah Minnie some points in the paint? They're going to have some times during this year where they're going to have to work off of the block and get two feet in the paint and work on some of those post moves. Now's a good time. Wide open down in the corner and taking a hard spill was Jameson Pel Pelveca. Oh, sweet. And he's still down. Yeah, he got decked. Well, to slowly get up. Looked a little worse than maybe it was, but always a scary situation. I mean, he had his feet set and watch this pump fake, then ran right into. Yeah, and Elijah Mini, we know the explosiveness. You get him into somebody, and it looked like it might have knocked his hip. Mini looked right. like he had a jetpack on his feet. I mean, he jumped <laughs> from like the left wing and somehow made it to the corner. Yeah. There's Ben Geschke. Drop it off to the right side. Geshki again will take it. Looking inside, nowhere to go. For Spring Arbor again, you want to try to work at short corner and high post. Bartholomew in for the Cougars. Jordan Nobles will grab the rebound. He'll get it up to Paul Jackson. DJ trying to weave his way in. Gets it up off the top of the glass and in. We talked about PJ starting slow. He's heated up towards the end of the first half and here into the second. Paul Jackson can finish and is crafty around the rim. We saw it there and then a little bit of jibber jabber afterwards. Paul Jackson taps his chest and says that's my bad. I got a little excited after that move. Perhaps he thought he got fouled. Perhaps he just was excited <laughs> to make that fine play and finish. Right now with seven points in this game. He also has three assists to go along with one rebound and Jaddy's a perfect three of three from the charity stripe. The Eagles is a team now 11 of 16. On the flip side, again, Spring Arbor did not shoot any free throws there in the first half, but two or three here in the second. Yeah, and they knocked down the first one, and this is the guy you want at the line. Paul Marendette averages nine free throw trips a game, sticks them both there. Sort of has that forward lead on the free throw. But hey, whatever works. This kid last year was uh, on that all freshman team in the Crossroads League. Just one team in the Crossroads League from the state of Michigan. I'm surprised to see that. Everybody else from Indiana or Ohio. Well, they're not too far down the road either. No, they're not. Just 55 miles as we get showtime coming up. And Elijah Minnie with the steal and the slam on the other side. Read that the whole way. Paul Marinette just got out of the way, so no foul was committed. Elijah Minnie continues his impressive debut. 19 points now. Boy, he can rip it and the instinct in the basketball sense to go with the athleticism. And again, going back, it's just so amazing to see 6'10 and 6'9 next to each other when Thompson and Minnie are just standing by each other as Jackson drove in, able to get it up off the glass and in. I'll give him nine points. Well, that play by Jackson shows that uh, he has the strength to get it up and over guys. And, and you know what that reminded me of? The old point guard from last year, Ty. Ty Tony. Ty tank. Tony, the tank. And that that's although Jackson physically doesn't look like him, you're gonna see a lot of him as far as the ability to finish in the paint and the confidence to go into the paint. Aaron had it knocked away three seconds on the shot clock. Now tries to get it over. They gotta get a shot off. Pavelka with it, drops it off, and that's before the uh, or after the shot clock. So a violation here on the Cougars. Eastern Michigan will take back over now. 13 turnovers on the day for Spring Arbor. Yeah, and that's unfortunate because Pavelka set up the big man, Bartholomew, nicely with a ball fake. And they got it to the high post, got the shot they wanted. They made it, but just a half second tardy. Is that Eastern Michigan 2 3 zone suffocating as usual under the Rob Murphy tutelage? The officials are heading over to the scores table. I think they're going to look and see exactly where the clock was. Maybe if he got it off in time as both benches come together. My initial thought, Ryan, was that he got it in time. And, and, and what do I know? They're going to talk about it, look at it very quickly, and say, no, he did not. But I, I don't know if it was the sound or what, but I, I certainly did think he got it off in time. But clearly, 
The official saw the monitor and saw otherwise. It was Kyle Bartholomew who put up the shot. He got it the last second of Pavelka. But nonetheless, big lead for Eastern Michigan here, 23 points. 35 points for Spring Arbor, 58 for the Eagles. Cougars 13 of 40 now in this game, Chad, for 33%. 5 of 17 from downtown. They're yet to hit a three-pointer here in the second half. Jordan Nobles with a good look, doesn't go. Thompson grabs the board. Putback doesn't go. Yeah, James rushed it. There was no need to rush it there. That is his patented hook shot. We have yet to really see his offense get going in this game outside of the dunks and the finishes. And I thought we'd see more opportunities for James. Hasn't had many, but this putback hook shot there, a bit impatient. Well, pitch and catch back and forth. A long three here by the Cougars. That one off the mark is Zydema with the good look. A rebound came in. We'll have a whistle underneath. We'll have a first immediate timeout under the 12 minute mark. It's 58 35 in favor of Eastern Michigan. 1148 to play here at the Convocation Center in Ypsilanti. Eastern Michigan under the direction of head coach Rob Murphy, who is now in his seventh season at the helm of EMU, boasting a pretty impressive resume, Chad, against non-D1 opponents. A perfect 19-0 mark in both exhibition and regular season games, and has done really a nice number as well with graduation rates as far as players are concerned. Yeah, unprecedented graduation rate. Rob Murphy deserves so much credit for getting his players their degrees. And, and obviously the kids have a lot to do with it, but Rob Murphy, and his staff do a fabulous job of stressing education, stressing getting that degree. 92% of his players through the six, the last six seasons have all graduated. That's amazing. That's Look at college basketball. And, and, and those numbers just are not there. And so Rob Murphy and his staff, and it's a lot of folks, support staff uh, as well, but Rob Murphy deserves so much credit. I think it gets overlooked how much he stresses academics and how much success they've had and doing what's most important, and that's getting the degree. Of course, last season didn't go as planned for the Eagles. Another alley-oop as James Thompson slams it down again. 60 to 36 in favor of the Eagles. Thompson feeling it, and he is uh, just shy of that double-double, his two-point shot. Knock away, now here's P.J. Right wing will pop for a three. That one's short on the right side of the iron, and Bartholomew will come in for the rebound. Well, Bartholomew appeared in 29 games last year for the Cougars, had 77 points, averaged just about three points a game. Registered 60 rebounds, eight blocks, five steals, and played every game this year, but hasn't started. Grinnell hits on the other side with the three. He's a nice freshman, a stretch four, and a guy that can hit from long range. There's many trying to drive in, gets a little contact, drives the baseline and gets it to go. And I want to go back to that Gurnell three. That is their first three here in the second half. Now one of five are the Cougars. If they're going to have the success in the Crossroads League, the Spring Arbor Cougars are going to need guys like the freshman off the bench and Brandon Durnell, the guy that uh, puts up five points a game. But he can stretch it. He can shoot that three and loves that corner three as well. 63 to 39, Eastern Michigan leads. Double team comes, center court. That's that extended pressure, Eastern will do it. Not just full court, but they'll have some half court and extend out their athletic wings to pressure the ball. Spring Arbor, a little bit vulnerable to the turnover, as you saw in the first half with nine flip flops. Right there, it trickles out of bounds, but it was last touched by Eastern Michigan, so it will stay with the Cougars. Seven seconds on the shot clock, 10.34 here on the game clock. Eagles as a team, Chad, just five turnovers through 30 minutes of play. Yeah, and a big part of that is the point guard Jackson and the rest of the uh, point guards taking care of the rock. Stop popping three again. Durnell with back-to-back -back threes. Makes it 63-42. to 42. Yeah, he's a good-looking player. He's going to cause havoc. Has a long career in Spring Arbor just outside of Jackson, Michigan. Durnell is a Fort Wayne in the Indianators. Many now. Pulls up from the right side. That one's short. Rebound now controlled here by Zydema. Fort Wayne, as some call it, Fun Wayne. <laughs> well, when you, when you do this job, you've been been through all the trails and <laughs> the backwoods countries and 
Go to Indiana a lot, Illinois, and another three. How about this? Three straight three pointers for Brandon Durnell. Yeah, Robert, who's going to get up and get anxious, nervous, and he's nearing a timeout. He's going to let him go, I believe. But that's the corner three, and that's in this zone, a susceptible spot to points. There's Thompson gets the feed, went up for the dunk, but Bartholomew made him readjust, and Bartholomew will pick up the foul. So that will be his second. And JT will head to the line. You mentioned he's close to the double double. He has eight points, so he nets both of these. He'll get it. He already has 12 rebounds, but he's already 0 for 2 from the line. Yeah, it will be his 38th all time in the green and white in just two seasons and three quarters of a game. And now he's just one point shy of it. You see a lot of double doubles, James has been by far the most consistent player in preseason, according to associate head coach Kevin Mondra. By the way, two new assistant coaches for Eastern Michigan this year, and Matt Klein, a rising star in the coaching ranks, who came over from East Tennessee State. Of course, was here as a director of basketball operations. And uh, Matt's a young assistant, very valuable. Kids love him. And Jimmy Wooten, who they picked up, Guy from New York City and has some very good recruiting foundations that he's set. A lot of these players you're seeing the younger ones he has brought in. He's a fine, fine coach himself. Two valuable members of this coaching staff. And uh, congratulations to Kevin Mondro as well, who got the associate head coach position. Had a good chat with uh, Greg Steiner. Have to listen to a little bit on that as the Eagles got ready to. Tip off the basketball season again. The first Division One game today. All basketball all day long today. But 10:30 a.m. the start time for this one, and then following this game, Chad, we're going to have the women's game as well. Florida A&M coming to town. The Rattlers. Yeah, that's going to be a great one, and, and a chance for Fred Castro to reveal his new ball club. And, and boy, are they uh, a talented group. Yeah. Revamped. Have some folks coming back. Best recruiting class in the MAC. Yes, sir. Well, after a disappointing year last year where they netted just six wins, they're hoping for a better outcome this year. It's going to take him a little time, but uh, I'll tell you what, another fast rising coach in this uh, league is Fred Castro. It'll be fun to watch for you to call. I'll be <laughs> listening to you. Appreciate it. James Thompson got mixed up down there low. <laughs> it's causing all kinds of headache. There aren't many James Thompsons in the uh, Crossroads League. Yep. That would Spring Arbor plays, but this will help them as well. Look, this is an important game for Spring Arbor, and one that's going to pay dividends down the road. Yeah, they're six and zero coming in. They've had a fantastic start, and, and this lopsided score really is not going to impact them. If anything, it's going to help them in their yep. league, and they'll get back into their seventh game and get into league play here. Uh, this is a promising program on the rise under their 19th year head coach, uh, Ryan Cottingham. Winning this coach in school history, by the way. Yeah, he took over in 99 and became their eighth head coach. And you mentioned it earlier, serves as the director of, of athletics as well, ranks 15th on the NAIA D2 men's basketball winningest active coaches list. Started as a coach as an assistant at Alma College in 95 before taking that same position at Spring Arbor in 98. And again, the head coaching position at 99 as Bond gets the feed from Paul Jackson, slams it home, hangs on the rim, excites the crowd, and Eastern Michigan continues to blow this thing wide open. Yeah, Ty Gross started it with a steal. Tim Bond finished it with a cam, but the Paul Jackson layoff was fresh. Here's Darnell, went for another three. That one was partially blocked. Now blocked again. This one's coming our way. To back up a little bit, AJ Crawford able to corral that one before it lands in our lap. Watch out, partner. Watch <laughs> out for the laptop, those uh, sexy specs you're wearing. You'll be, uh, you'll be taking over for the women and maybe uh, the men's game on Sunday for me. That one swatted from behind Jordan Nobles, and now a shot clock violation. Wow, what an intense set on defense. Sometimes you can coast when you're up 22 points. Not right now, Eastern Michigan really starting to pour it up and turn it up a notch on the defensive end. 67-45 is the lead. The Eagles right now over the Cougars.
751 to play here in the second half. Eastern Michigan on top of Spring Arbor, 67 to 45. Ryan Woolley alongside Chad Bush. And Chad, we talked about uh, preseason expectations coming into this game, not as high as they were last year for Eastern Michigan, who were picked to win the Mid-American Conference West Division. This year, the preseason polls came out, and Eastern's kind of where you expect them to be. Yeah, and surprise some that they're just fourth in the MAC West, and sometimes expectations are something for folks that they can't handle. I'm not saying last year they could, but pick to finish fourth this year, a little bit under the radar, lying in the weeds at fourth behind Toledo, Ball State, and Western, who was picked to win the West, uh, and just one player on the preseason All-Mac team and James Thompson. Western Michigan was picked to uh, become the tournament champion this year at 10 first place votes. Buffalo not too far behind. They had nine Ball State with five. And Thomas Wilder really the big decision for a lot of media members, myself included, to pick Western Michigan for the simple fact that he went pro. Western wasn't going to have much left, but he certainly leads uh, the Broncos offensive attack. Yeah, Wilder, Wilder, like Thompson, decided to come back, and it was a good choice. A nice steal here by Ty Gross. He'll take it in and slam it home. Eastern Michigan putting on a clinic up at the rim with the dunks. Now 69-45, Eagles lead. Yeah, Gross, you can see, is a two-way player, a guy that uh, is really going to get his points in transition. A, a guy that is kind of working on his in-between game uh, of shooting. He's long range, and then he's uh, dunks, but... He's got some mid-range potential as well. Right there, he just grabs it off the back and now feeds it down to the left side. Ellison trying to go in, nowhere to go. Kicks it out right side, three on the way, and too strong. Rebound into the hands of Luke Barber. We'll have a whistle. Tim Bond for the foul. One thing you can see early on with this Eastern Michigan team in, in, in comparison to last year, it's a very unselfish team. They are not worried about getting theirs. They know they're going to get theirs, but sharing the sugar and getting other guys opportunities is something you can tell they are focused on, and that's a big part of winning, playing together, wanting the other guys to get theirs. You know, the one thing we didn't talk about too, Chad, about this Cougars team coming in is just who they have on their squad as well. I mean, they have six freshmen on this roster, and to be 6-0 and this early in the season, and you talk about the, uh, the two starters that they had returning from last year, and we talked about uh, you know the, the big three and the Maiden Dork and uh, the Marindet. Those are the, the two big, the big two big ones, and then Zydema being the third. You know they look good. They really do, and, and they've got some nice pieces off the bench as well. When you can come in and bring a 6'11", 250-pound junior center off the bench. Uh, in Bartholomew, when you can come in and bring a guy like Durnell, who's knocked down three triples in this game. Uh, I mean, there's some pieces. You know, Geschke, uh, Crawford, who we haven't seen, a, a backup guard. There's some pieces here, and, and I tell you what, I, I'm not going to pretend I know the cross uh, roads lead. lead in and out, but they will be a contender for yep. the conference. Well, even just looking at the numbers from last year, I mean, 78 points per game they averaged. That was the most in a season in more than 10 years for them. They held opponents to just 71 points per game last year, which not only led the league, but ranked 15th in the country. Wow. So, you know, the numbers are there, and the, yeah, they didn't go as far as they expected to last year as well, and they finished fifth in the league play, and that's where they're projected to go again this year, but off to a hot start, and you see that they have playmakers on the floor, and if it continues to move forward, as you said, they could be a contender. Yeah, and they've looked smooth. Uh, they looked unselfish as well, and they, they look like they're a confident team. It's been knocked down a couple levels, but you don't see guys hanging their heads. You don't see guys uh, starting to, you know, fall in despair. It's an upbeat bunch, and, and they're going to be contenders in their conference. But Jones has checked in now for Eastern Michigan for the first time in the game. He's a 6'8 freshman forward out of Anderson, South Carolina. He's a three-time letter winner for Barney Brown at T.L. Hanna High School. He was a captain for the Yellow Jacket squad. He's number 20 out there. And now taking a seat for EMU is Terry Harris. He was a late pickup as well, Ryan. They got him in August, which is extremely late. And a guy that uh, they like a lot, needing in his body and shape a little bit. But Bud Jones is offense ahead of his defense right now, but a real nice touch. He's a guy that uh, they might lean on for some minutes this year. Seeing some extended playing time now here with just under six minutes to play here in the first half. This one uh, pretty well in hand for the Eagles, 75-46. Good ball movement, though, here by the Cougars. That's Durnell again. 
Boy, he's heating up. Make that four threes on the day for him. Yeah, he likes the corner three, and he's stuck from each corner. Not discriminating corners here in the Convocation <laughs> Center. And uh, man, oh man, somebody's got to get out there on it. Rob Murphy worried about his defense, not his offense, and, and he's a bit uh, unsettled right now after that open look. There's Gross, feeds it over to the left side. That's Ellison. He'll pop for a three. Too strong. Rebound chased down by Ernell here. Running with numbers are the Cougars three on two. Geschke drops it off underneath. That one will go out of bounds. And it'll be last touched by Spring Arbor. So another turnover, 18th of the day for the Cougars. Yeah, that's a high number. That one a bit unforced. They've had several forced turnovers. Ellison trying to drive in, kicks it out. Here's McAdoo. Perfect. Get Beautiful ready to hear shot. that a lot, partner. Get ready to hear that a lot for years to come. Ellison to McAdoo, the backcourt, the freshman duo. I don't know how much this year, but both those guys can score and pass. Here's Darnell. Oh, he's at the gym. I mean, this kid, <laughs> he can't miss right now. Five of seven is Darnell. Wow. Oh, he can stroke it. They got a fab freshman of their own. I'll tell you what, this is impressive to watch the freshman on both sides, yep. Ryan, doing that's, good things. It's going to make it just a little bit tighter as we had a push off underneath. So Bud Jones will pick up a foul. That will be his first in this game. And Ben Geschke now will step out to inbound. Bringing the ball at the court is Luke Barber. He'll feed it over to the right side to Pavelka. He's Geschke trying to drive in. Now feeds it down on the baseline. That's Durnell. Double team comes. Got his man in the air. And that was Jordan Peterson who's seeing some playing time here for the Eagles as well. Yeah, Turnell going back to him now, leading the team in scoring. And he's three times his average with just five points a game, his season high in his young, promising career. He'll make his first two of three from the line. Turnell, a 88% free throw shooter. But 77 55 four minutes to play here in the first game of the season for Eastern Michigan following today's game they will remain home University of Michigan Dearborn will come to town Chad and I will be on the call for that one as well looking forward to that Sunday afternoon the pass finally picked up here by the Cougars now they're gonna feed up to Darnell he was looking behind him. He didn't know who was there. Gross was step for step for him. He looked left, but Gross was out right. So Gross will pick up the foul, and we'll have free throws when we come back. 3.39 to play. 77-55, the Eagles of Eastern Michigan leading the Cougars to Spring Arbor. Welcome back to the Convocation Center. I'm Michael Kermy, and I just want to talk about the top performer for tonight. We had Elijah Minnie. He had 22 points, four rebounds, and three assists. Top player for the game and on the team. But the, the rest of the half, we'll get to see how these rookies and these freshmen get to show their stuff. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, Mike. Certainly, Elijah Minnie has put on a clinic in this game. As you said, 22 points, seven of seven from the free throw line, one of five from downtown, and seven of 13 from the floor and Chad we have seen a bunch of rookies and some new faces on both sides of the ball and both really exerting themselves throughout the course of this game and some growing. Yeah some of the rookies for Eastern Michigan that have shined the most uh, Ty Gross 10 points in this ball game uh, has, has done some great things grabbing glass starting breaks and finishing and then you, you see the freshman that has done so much leading this team in scoring now in Durnell. Darnell five triples and seven tries, also six boards. So the stretch for freshmen with 19 points. A lot of freshman love on this court here this morning. Making both of his free throws as well, so that will make it now a 20-point game again with the Eagles on top. Eastern started this game trailing 6-2, to two, but have not looked back since. I said this morning we've crossed over into the afternoon hour. Is it, it is past noon. All right, look at that. 
It's always, look, when basketball season starts, you get lost in the time, right? I mean, even when the MAC tournament, or not even the MAC tournament, but the NCAA tournament, when it starts, you're just fully engrossed, and it just continues to go, and you just put time on, on, on the mantle. Yeah, it's always a fun day. I mean, a Friday, you start early, games all night, and uh, you get a chance to see your ball club perform for the first time. And we'll get a chance to see him again on Sunday. Yep. And that's it's going to be a fun year. I can tell you that right now. It's going to be exciting. And this is a group that looks cohesive already, despite all the new faces. Gross with a knockaway, and then Ellison brought it up the court. Now he left corner three. It is good by Gross. You called it already with 10. Now give him 13. He's the third Eastern Michigan player in double figures. He has 13 to go along with Thompson's 10 and Elijah Minnie's 22. Originally signed with Northeastern, but came back home to Ypsilanti. Ypsilanti Lincoln product could be one of the best. From Ypsilanti to stick around town and play for the Eagles. We want to remind everybody, make sure you stay tuned to our post-game show. Chad Bush will step out of the court and have a one-on-one -on -one interview with head coach Rob Murphy, get his thoughts on today's game and look ahead to Michigan, University of Michigan Dearborn, that is, as well on Sunday. As outside three is good. Well, they're going to call it a two. It's Bud I, Jones. Yeah, Bud Jones tipped it in. It was hard to tell from the standpoint if it was going to fall back down for Green, but. Bud Jones with his first Eastern Michigan points for the freshman from Anderson, South Carolina. Loose ball underneath, fighting for it, wrestling on the ground. One EMU player and two Spring Arbor players. Well, I have a moment. Chad, I, I do want to thank you. It's, it's been fun to call the game with you. Now, for those of you that don't know, Chad is the radio voice of Eastern Michigan basketball over on 89.1 WEMU, and we've worked alongside for many, many years, but never have had the opportunity to work together. Yeah, now will you come work with me in radio? I'd love point. to, absolutely. We do a switcheroo. Maybe, maybe make a road trip out of it, uh, yeah. join you on the road. Yeah, this is uh, this is fun, man. Thank you for having me, first off. Uh, that's, that's the most uh, gratuity that should be displayed here. <laughs> That seat is always welcome for you, my man. Appreciate that. Eastern Michigan with a three, rebound underneath. We look for Jones underneath again. Put back is good. Bud Jones, not his birth given name, but was given because of, remember my little buddy? Yes. My buddy. My buddy. Your buddy. Well, that's how he got that nickname. So they've shortened it to Bud, but if you get to know him, it's Buddy, really. He, he goes by Buddy. It, well, it, it depends on who it is, but he'll go by Buddy typically. They've shortened it to Bud. Typically, I'll t even when I talk to people, hey, what's going on, Bud? Or hey, Buddy. Right. So you, you, you whether it's your name or not. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 84 to 60, Eastern Michigan leads. Again, they will be taking on uh, University of Michigan Dearborn. That will be on Sunday. Following today's game for Spring Arbor, November 11th, they will be battling with Lawrence Tech. If you're wondering the reason he has that nickname, it, it's the challenge in announce, pronouncing his first name. It's Quintarius. Hmm. Q U I N T E R I O U S. Rashawn Jones is his birth given name. Quintarius Rashawn Jones? That's it. The full name doesn't flow off like but or butter, bud or butter. No, bud straight to the point. I mean, <laughs> you mean business when you're called bud. <laughs> Eastern Michigan will step out now. A minute 12 to play in this game. They lead by 24. Lake Ellison, the freshman guard, will control it at the top of the block. He will feed it over now to the right side to Gross. Feeds into Quintarius. But, but. Quintarius with a kiss. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> He's going to look back at this and say, guys, I said but. <laughs> oh. Nice addition to the roster for the Eagles as well now with six points. Well, and, and that is part of his game. He has a real soft touch, has nice hands, plays bigger than 6'8". Here's Ellison, feeds over to Gross, and he slams it home with a two-handed jam. The whole way Ellison was looking to see if anybody was trailing, puts it up, and they slam it home again. Wow. I mean, there's going to be some high flying. You're going to see distribution that Eastern Michigan has not had in years. You got Ellison as the backup to Jackson. Both guys love to feed that rock. And boy, do they do it smooth to the guys that can run the lanes in transition and finish with flushes and strong with a basketball. How about this? Ty Gross with 15 points in this game. Now a steal by Gross. Tell you what, if it wasn't for Elijah Minnie early in this game, Gross might be our player of the game. His sixth steal of the game for Todd Gross in his Eagle debut for the redshirt freshman. Isaiah Green will finish at the rim. 
They're going to wave it off. So Kevin McAdoo will shoot the free throws. But he's one of three players is gross, Chad, and double figures for Eastern Michigan. Well, it's a good problem to have, but there is a log jam at three. Tim Bond is a tough guy to take off the yeah. court. He's a senior. He's your leader. We know what he does. He's a glue guy. And, and so that's his primary position. But you're going to have to find some space for Ty Gross. Mm -hmm. And so one of the options is to move Tim Bond back to point guard, which he's played throughout his career at Eastern Michigan. I think we're going to be seeing a lot of Tim Bond at point guard if Ty Gross continues to thrive as the three in this Rob Murphy uh, offense. Almost had another steal right there as they were bringing up the court. Now Ellison knocks that one away. Gross was strutting down. Now Ellison going to take it the whole way. Up and in. Count the bucket of the foul. Malik Ellison takes it in 89 to 60. Eagles lead 14 and a half to go here in this game. Malik Ellison is a winner. Class C player of the year in the state of Michigan. Rob Murphy says, I want to bring in guys that are winners. They went out and got a guy that won three straight titles to lead. Uh, Flint Beecher High School. He was mentored by one of the best, Monte Morris, mm -hmm. a guy from Iowa State and a guy that's in the National Basketball Association. Uh, but this guy's been a pleasant surprise in Ellison. Way ahead of his game, just 5'8", plays bigger than that. Size has not been an issue thus far. And you mentioned Beecher High School, four-time first-team all-conference, three-time first-team all-state honoree, and Class C Player of the Year. As Gross will grab the final rebound in this game, and the Eagles will coast to a 30-point victory, 90-60 to over the Cougars of Spring Harbor. We'll take a timeout when we come back. Chad Bush will head out to the floor, have a conversation with that man right there, head coach Rob Murphy. Look ahead to Michigan on Sunday. Again, Eagles win by 30, 90-60. Back after this.